Good day. My name is Sam Anderson, the acting president of Goucher Student Government. Today I'll be moderating the fall 2018 Goucher Student Government debate. Not all of the candidates could join us today, but we are pleased to have here seven of the first year senatorial candidates and one sophomore senatorial candidate. The candidates will now introduce themselves from left to right. I'm Tyler Chanel and I'm a first year student. I'm Derek Baraskin, I'm a first year student. I'm Sam Suarez and I'm a first year student. Hi, I'm Jabril Howard and I'm a first year student. I'm Campbell Shepard, I'm a first year student. I'm Derek Burnett and I'm a first year student. Hi, I'm Alex Giovanni. I'm a first year student. Hi, I'm Xavier Rivers. I'm a sophomore. Thank you, candidates. As you arrived at Goucher this year, you walked into a Goucher during a period of relative instability on the academic side of campus. Academic revitalization initially caused frustration amongst the student body and the faculty are walking on, walking on eggshells to ensure that students are represented as the process continues. How will you engage students who have felt in the past that their opinions were not, in, uh, were not considered and ensure that student voices are considered now? Uh, well, I guess a part of like, ensuring that uh, the entire class like, knows what's going on as far as things relating to academics, uh, myself, like if I'm elected and whoever else is elected alongside me, uh, I guess that I would try to get us together so that we could have like town halls with our class so that we can kind of speak on any like ongoing issues like um, for example with the thing about the majors um, that would be something that we could talk about so that I could take ideas directly from uh, my peers and then me and my fellow uh, senators can put it together and we can contribute it to the Senate as a whole and then to the administration as necessary um, because I think that it's important for us to work together to start and then by having the town halls, we get to hear everybody's voice and we get to take that stuff back and, you know, disseminate it as necessary. Well, I think uh, the big issue that a lot of people are frustrated about, I know something I was personally frustrated about, is that it seemed like a lot of these conversations happened in private. Um, a lot of the conversations seemed to just happen with faculty. Um, if you were lucky and you had already declared, they, I know they consulted with some students in the majors themselves, but for someone like me who was a first year last year and obviously hasn't declared yet, um, that was a big issue, at least I took personally, because it, you know, yes, things might, the uh, consultations might have worked and they might have figured out stuff for the seniors who have been in the program for a while they're familiar with, um, but that doesn't mean that the, it works for the freshmen. So I think the biggest uh, going, fo biggest issue going forward that would need to be resolved is just making sure that all students, obviously the ones who are currently enrolled in the major or have expressed interest in the major should have more say because it is more important for them. But I think that all students going forward uh, need to make sure their voices are being heard. But also on that same note, not just being heard, but, make sure, but so that they know what's going on. Um, I know um, there was a big delay getting the teach out reports up, for instance. Um, things like that should be uh, like much quicker um, so that people can plan accordingly and so that, again, everyone's kind of on the same page uh, because you can't make your complaints known if you don't know what the issue is. Thanks. Derek? So as a first year coming into this, it wasn't anything that I felt I had any grip on or that um, I really should have because it would have been preposterous to expect the school to ask the incoming class and ask us for our opinions on it. But it is understandable, um, certainly why the upperclassmen um, feel like it's a problem to have majors cut without any information really being given to them. And as first years too, just because we didn't know this was going on beforehand, some people may have been looking for these majors, some people are undeclared and are considering and maybe would have taken one of these cut majors. So it's problematic that information wasn't available. Um, so. As a senator, I would set up a system where we can listen to the entire school and especially the first years as we're still assimilating to the school and, and figuring out what we like, what we dislike about it, and have some kind of a system where people could maybe email or text just any problem they have or any good thing that they want to compliment the school about just so that we could be listening to people's voices continuously instead of just selecting a few people in groups to, to speak their mind, which is great in some ways, but. For a lot of things, you want to have the entire school community um, and their voices heard. Thank you. Jabril. 
So um, as a first year, I feel like most of the problems, at least as far as the major cuts were going, um, was the kind of the lack of communication that seemed to be coming from the um, coming from the administration. So um, uh, as first years, we weren't really affected by the major cuts, like in the same way that upperclassmen were. But like the, um, as uh, Xavier the um, mentioned earlier, a lot of the consultation appeared to be happening behind closed doors, and I feel like a big part of the uh, Gatcher student government going forward should be trying to bridge that gap, that divide between the administration and the student body. So um, um, as, like as I think all of us will be trying to focus on efforts on trying to uh, create that trying to bridge that gap and trying to create a more open dialogue. Alex. Something that I'd certainly want to see going forward is that a lot of students seem to be represented vocally and there are a lot of avenues through which students are now being able to express their concerns, but the actual implementation of those concerns and the solutions for those concerns doesn't seem to be where we are excelling and so I would find different avenues through which students can actively be involved and find solutions to the problems they see with the majors that they are exploring, that they want to explore, so that their education can best be simulated because I find it to be problematic that there isn't representation for a lot of students in various committees. So I serve on the faculty curriculum committee and so we discuss proposals that students potentially will be involved in and so that's a great way for students to actively express their concerns and act upon them, which is where I think that disconnect occurs. Campbell. So I truly believe that an act of transparency and GSG and everything else will lead to the benefit of Goucher. And I believe that because I think that um, when, um, when majors and minors are being cut without anybody else's opinions and without the student body being informed about what's going on, that can lead to very many disappointing things happening and also students becoming uh, uneducated about what is happening in their own community. Salvador. I remember when I first came here and I was on the group meet, I remember seeing a bunch of students were very angry at the major cuts. No one really knew why, but very people were very vocal about it. A few weeks later, there was a meeting inside the cafeteria where students were increasingly vocal. And it's come to my attention that students have the methods to be able to voice their opinions. However, there's not a lot of organization in making sure that their ideas and their wishes and demands get to the administration. So I believe student government going forward to try to work as a, a rubber band to hold together the, the opinions and the ideas of the student body to make sure that it not only gets like heard but it gets enforced and it gets listened to by the faculty. Derek. Honestly I feel like where the students problem came through came from with the majors being cut is because it wasn't a lot of communication between administrators and the students and I feel like there's needs, everybody needs to know who to go to when they have problems, not necessarily through student government, but like them through this by themselves. They don't feel like they have to come to us first, but go to the people they need to talk to first to get their problems dealt with. Thank you all. One of Goucher student government's main roles on campus is to serve as a middleman between faculty and, and administrators. During the process of working with faculty and administrators on behalf of students, how will you keep an open mind on current issues? Uh, back to Tyler. Uh, well, I guess a part of like ensuring that uh, the entire class like knows what's going on as far as things relating to academics. Uh, myself, like if I'm elected and whoever else is elected alongside me, uh, I guess that I would try to get us together so that we could have like town halls with our class so that we can kind of speak on any like ongoing issues. Like, um, for example, with the thing about the majors. Um, that would be something that we could talk about so that I could take ideas directly from uh, my peers and then me and my fellow uh, senators can put it together and we can contribute it to the Senate as a whole and then to the administration as necessary. Um, because I think that it's important for us to work together to start and then by having the town halls we get to hear everybody's voice and we get to take that stuff back and you know disseminate it as necessary. Thank you. Xavier. Uh, I've been working with the administration uh, a lot in the past uh, year or so, um, and in my experience, it can be a bit difficult to balance them because usually if there's a really good idea um, that students really like, there's a reason why it can't be done otherwise. They would have done it already. Um, it's not saying nothing can be done, of course, um, but um, it usually is along the lines of going into the administrator's office and saying, hey, students really like this idea. Can it be done? If not, why not? And then a long discussion will, uh, you know, ensue about 
why it can't happen, and the reasons usually make sense. And from there, I'll usually bring that back to the students. Like, hey, I talked to um, X administrator about Y issue. They said this about it. What do you, like, you know, knowing now why the administration can't do this or why the administration doesn't want to do this, like, is there anything, like, you want to, like, me to bring back? Um, that way, there's a, con like, that way both parties are aware of the other's needs, which I think helps a lot. Um, in my experience, uh, a lot of uh, students don't know the, uh, like a lot of the real reasons why things can't happen on this campus. Um, to be fair, I think a lot of administrators, um, not intentionally, but just end up not really revealing that information. Um, and I know a lot think it's common knowledge, so in my experience, um, being able to come back to students and say, hey, this is, what, this is why the administration has this, is doing this, um, that usually helps um, with students a lot and generally speaking can also help um, formulate their opinions and what they want a bit better and make it almost more clear in a way like and make it more into a tangible goal. So uh, essentially my what I foresee my role uh, continuing to be is um, again going back and forth between the students and the administrators uh, basically you know going like like why wouldn't this work while why can't the you know and uh, making sure that both sides are again aware of the needs of the other so that a mutual um, solution can be found because again you do need both the administrators and the students when it comes to um, implementing proposals you can't just have one or the other Thank you. so I agree with what Tyler was saying earlier about how the students um, really are the driving force of this institution. Without a student, there is no school. That being said, an anarchy where there's only students running the school would not work. Um, so all the voices, faculty, staff, administration, and students um, are all very important. But the thing is, everyone has a different perspective and everybody has different specialties and things that they are not as great in. So a student may be very vocal about how they feel about a residential issue where a faculty member would have no clue because they don't live on the campus. Um, so it's all about getting people to be able to speak the other people's language and that doesn't necessarily have to be a huge change where like before you speak to this person you have to use these specific words or buzzwords or whatever. It's more about allowing people to understand the student government being a bridge in between so if there's any miscommunication issues instead of the students saying oh this is problematic they're just not listening to me instead of the administration saying they're just demanding too much we kind of work as a bridge to be like this is what they're trying to say and this is how you should understand it what i imagine the most effective form of communication between students administrators faculty is is the type when you understand the perspective of the opposing party but also how that perspective came to be. I think oftentimes we see the perspective of those who oppose our ideas, but we don't understand the limitations of our own perspective. We don't understand the reasons behind the opposing perspective. And so recognizing those, developing those, and creating a dialogue to discuss them would be really important for the Senate to do going forward to develop students' ability to understand. As you were referring to earlier, Xavier, something that there are certain limitations to student involvement, but we can maximize our involvement and maximize our impact if we understand who we're working with. So this appears to be to be like a question of accessibility and also logistics, because um, you know you can't as was like you can't have you know the students and the and administration being on different wavelengths, and they can't and like in order for uh, Goucher to be a cohesive college, you know they can't both be you know working like against each other while simultaneously working with each other. So it's all about trying to figure out what it like um, the student government. It's all about trying to get the faculty's administrate uh, interests communicated to the students and kind of seeing where the problems arise and can be solved, and then also seeing where where the um, students' problems can be solved by the uh, administration or where the problems arise in between that. So like, and it's all but like also I mean you can't you have to figure out what interests can be you know can be solved stat and what interests and or problems can be, you know, perhaps are more long term or are more, um, you know, require you know, more thinking. So it's all about trying to bridge that gap, as I've said before, and all, but also trying to, um, you know, f uh, decide which, which, uh, which interests and what, which problems are to be balanced and which ones are best communicated. So I'll agree. Um, something that I believe is really important to me is making sure everyone's ideas are represented. I often go to different people and want to hear their ideas because I not only want to 
like know who they are as a person. I want to understand how their experiences help formulate their ideas. And I think oftentimes when people try to converse and try to say what they believe, they let emotion take the, the, the wheel. And I'm not saying that this is wrong and I understand why people are angry or upset and not trying to invalidate their feelings. However, what ends up happening is that it makes people want to back off and it makes people want to shelter off. So I think that student government should function as sort of a middleman, a way to decrease the emotional side of it while bringing up the logistical side and attempt to share what not only the faculty and the administration believes, but what the students believe with each other in a non-hostile and effective format, an effective format that ensures that we will have long-term change and long-term stability instead of just shouting at each other. Because if you look at um, the cafeteria prote protest a few weeks ago, there while there was um, lots of like talking with the administration while people were asking them lots of questions at the panel. It wasn't really meaningful questions, it seemed more like rhetoric. And I understand again the anger, but did it really, did we get the answers we wanted? It seemed like we left more angry than we were. And I think that's a problem. We should be working together to find a better way to communicate our issues and our problems with each other rather than shouting. And that's what I believe the student government's core function should be. The best way to really understand someone's idea is just talking to them personally. You can't talk to a certain group of people and expect it to be the concerns of the whole student body. You have to really take time and really understand why people feel this way and not really ex like not really agree with them, but like act as like just talk to them like why do you feel this way or what happened to you to make you feel this way, but not really oh I understand what you're saying just to go on about your day. But that's that's on like the student and the faculty and administrator side. You can't really act as a middleman if you don't understand where everyone is coming from from a moral standpoint. I think obviously the best way that student government should be run, as everybody else has said here, is that it should be a transition piece from the students that we are representing are representing uh, to the faculty. Now I think that a lot of people forget that uh, running for student government is supposed to be representing you, but uh, because we get caught up with our own opinions and we want to make change and we get caught up in all of our emotions, but I think, as Salvatore is saying, we kind of need to take our emotion out of student government and run the logistics. We need to take everything that we, you guys want, because we are representing you, take that to the faculty, understand what they want and what they need, and then we discuss what is best for Goucher from there. And then we discuss what is best for Goucher from there. Thank you. As we all know, an anti-black hate crime occurred on Goucher's campus this week. Events like these seem to, more, seem to occur more than they should. This is unfortunately a way in which Goucher reflects the United States' current climate. GSG is an organization that must represent the student body and therefore you will be at, expected to respond when students are targeted. What will your approach be to sen handling sensitive topics like this one as a senator? My approach is pretty evident in the post that I posted. Uh, right after the situation happened, right after I found out about it, um, you first want to condemn the act, and then you kind of want to comfort the people or the person that it targeted. Um, in this case, it targeted people who look like me. And so when I responded, for me it was personal. I understand trying to separate yourself like from certain things as a senator, but at the end of the day, Yes, we have the title as like a senator in the student government, but we are students and we are people. And when you, you shouldn't separate yourself from something like that. So when I addressed it, like I said, I condemned the act uh, and I tried to comfort the people who were targeted. And like I said, those people who look like me. Um, and also you kind of want to let people know to, and I know that it's very agitating, but you want to kind of take the time, you want to step back before you react you kind of want to evaluate the situation. So I've stressed time and time again for us to be vocal about it, to let people know that we won't stand for it. We won't stand for acts of hate on this campus. And to also let the administration and the police department kind of handle the investigation. Like don't react or don't try to punish other people because of the person who you think did it or you, you know what they might look like. So I was just trying to make sure that everyone was calm and everyone knew what, how I was feeling about it. Well, I think it goes without saying that, of course, um, like he said, the first thing you want to do is just condemn it and say there's no place for it on campus, because there isn't. Uh, again, I feel like that kind of goes without saying. I think that's going to be an opinion we all share. Um, 
the next steps from that is what's a bit more complicated, um, especially when it comes to uh, you know uh, hate crime issues. Because admittedly, as a straight white guy, <laughs> I'm usually not um, a targeted group, and I don't want to speak for a targeted group. Um, like right now, I'm trying to do uh, I'm trying to reach out to people and see what they wanted um, from the administration, what they wanted, how they wanted this to be handled. Um, because again. I, because I'm not part of the targeted group, I don't want to speak for the targeted group. Um, so besides, again, the, con uh, the condemnation and making, making it very clear that this won't stand on campus, um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's uh, really kind of uh, up in the air and might depend more on each specific scenario um, and what um, I learned from this uh, scenario going forward. So, um, like, as has been repeated a couple of times, yes, the first step should always be condemnation. But, like, moving forward, I feel like the next step always should be accountability and ensuring that the Gautra administration, as well as the student body, understands and, like, understands, you know, both the nature of the hate crime, how serious a matter it is, but also making sure that the perpetrators are, you know, are either caught and caught and, and you know, punitive measures are, en are enacted. Because I understand from um, talking with other students and other upperclassmen um, that these, this is just one in a long string of hate crimes that have been perpetrated here on Gadger. Like, I understand that there have been anti-trans as well as Islamophobic hate crimes here on campus before. And I also understand that the perpetrators of at least a couple of these hate crimes are actually active still on campus so I feel like moving forward that the you know there needs to be either more you know, that the administration perhaps should take further steps to ensure that you know that targeted groups feel secure but as well as you know perpetrator that there are that more punitive measures are enacted and that this um, that these hate one is just going to continue and the, you know there's going to be no accountability and that is something that cannot be tolerated here at Goucher so unfortunately things like this are often um, though very threatening, and I'm not to say what the um, belief of the person doing this was, how far they were willing to take this, but they're always um, a cry for attention. And it's important that we ad address the issue without putting too much emphasis on the perpetrator because giving them the attention they want and the voice they want is not going to help the problem at all. And um, like people were saying before, and as somebody who is white, it is not my place necessarily to speak. Um, about this specific instance or to speak for victims of anything that I'm not um, in that group of uh, victims for. So as a student government, it's important that we kind of take a stance that is above it all. I hesitate to say that, but that's essentially what I'm trying to say. And more mature and very like step back to be like, this is what happened. Um, we need to come together as a student body. But like we said before, we're also still students. We're still humans. And it's okay to say, hey guys, I'm gonna step back on this one. I don't feel like it's my place. Or to be like, I feel very strongly about this. I have a statement to suggest. Um, how do we all feel about that? How do we feel uh, the student body's gonna take to this? And it's all about communication, finding out who's the best person to deal with something. I do think when horrendous things like this happen, it's important to recognize your place within them. So as a white student, it's not my place to share the stories of those who are most directly affected and I shouldn't be sharing their stories because I can't accurately represent them, but I do need to serve as someone who is supporting that story being shared. I need to support the students on campus who are most directly affected in an effort, in a long-term effort, to limit the number of people who are affected by horrible hate crimes like this because lasting action is what we need, lasting change. And so there have been a lot of groups for support recently, a lot of avenues through which students can support others, but we need to see them continue throughout because as Jerome was referring to earlier, there are many instances that we've seen in the past here on Goucher's campus that we've heard about even as first year students, and now seeing that they're continuing, we need to make lasting change, and by serving as uplifters of stories that aren't ours to share, but we should help in disseminating would be incredibly important to continue. So let me just first preface this by saying that my experiences are based off of my like privilege and my identity as a white person, so I'm not trying to identify or diminish the voices of people of color who are affected by this. And you know, however, I am also gay, and I know that condemning doesn't remove the fear, it doesn't remove the anger, and it doesn't remove the angst that people feel when something is said like this. 
Sure, you can condemn it, you can say it's wrong, but how are you going out and how are you showing that's wrong? What, are you, what steps are you taking to show that you disagree with this? Because if this climate is about making sure that everyone's safe, how come unsafe things are allowed to happen? How come people are allowed to feel like they can't walk outside? How come, how come people feel like they are, their lives are in danger for something like their race, or their sexual orientation, or their gender identity, or their religion? And I think something that student government needs to work on, along with the administration and just the group culture as a whole, is trying to find a way to make sure that people do not feel afraid for who they are and that they can become their best selves and not feel like they need to minimize their voice and who they are as a person because some, uh, I can't swear, because some bad person <laughs> writes something on a mirror carving the of people. We can't just say some rhetoric is condemning because that's clearly not doing anything. We need to work hard to try to find an actual way to solve this issue and not just telling students to essentially shut up. First off, um Pretty sure I can speak for everyone here. Racism is not a good thing, and it's been around for a long time. But the way we approach issues is is how effective it's going to be. Because I feel like with me, it's always a good thing to actually analyze the situation before we just jump in straight into emotions. Because first off, we don't know the description of the person or who really did it, but it's just taking a step back and saying, why did it happen? And there's actually a team on campus called the Bird Team that actually deals with stuff like this. And I feel like a lot of people don't know that because they don't know who to go to when problems like this occur. So it's not really just off the jump, just this form of group, but what pathways can we go to to actually solve the problem due to the administrator? And on the students' part, we can form a group and talk about it, not just with certain people, with everyone, because we are in a bubble at Goucher, and everyone is affected by this. So not just forming groups here and there, but forming a group with everyone. Yeah. Um, as Alex and Salvador were saying uh, earlier, that um, this is going to be speaking from my experiences. I am a white, straight male. Um, I am not the target, targeted group that's being affected by this, but I can say that I did feel attacked by this. Um, I went straight to my friends on the soccer team, made sure they were all right, and I was just aghast that this would happen on this campus. I mean, I, it hap these things happened in my high school. Uh, we had swastikas painted in the bathrooms. Um, I did not find any of this okay, and um, I did not expect this to be happening on Goucher. Um, for example, though, the protests that were taking place in Mary Fisher, I think were a step in the right direction. Uh, we were taking away from the people that actually did it. We weren't giving them attention. We started the hashtag I am student 108. Um, I feel like these were all very good steps towards taking away and creating a tighter knit community, which I think is what we need to do here at Goucher. And overall, I think that Goucher just needs to become a place where we can feel as if we are one in the same. And it was student, student 104. 104. Student yeah. 104. Yeah, so. Um, dining is constantly a big issue here on Goucher's campus. Um, GSG recently formed a student um, advisory committee to work with Bon Appetit um, to, pr to produce a productive relationship. How will you work with that group um, and to assist in the efforts of uh, resolving student concerns before they become a problem? So, me for example, right? Food is a cultural thing. It's a cultural experience for everybody. Um, and when I got on campus, you know, being a black student, um, I was very disappointed in the food because I'm like, you know, I don't want salad, I don't want gluten-free food, like, I don't want that. Like, I want, like, macaroni. Like, I want food that relates to my culture. Um, and so I advocated for uh, Soul Food Fridays, which is now a thing that happens for Mills White. Um, and and knowing that food is a cultural experience, I would try to talk to as many people as possible. Like, you know, what do you think about the food? Just in passing, like, you know. And I would bring that back to the uh, dining hall advisory board um, so that they kind of know what students want, like, going into it. Um, I would also advocate for an expansion of the whole recommendation process. Um, I think that it should be something that should be able to happen online as well and not just writing it on a little card and posting it on the board. Um, I think that it'd be a lot easier. Everybody uses their phones. All of us are tech savvy. So if we can kind of extend that into like the 21st century, you'll definitely see more of a response from a lot of the students and they'll be able to take, because that'll be real like data that they can analyze 
and they will use that to, um, you know, make the decisions about the pool, and it could be backed up by numbers and you know things of that nature. So um, I'm a member of the Food Recovery Network, so it doesn't have a direct relation in, in any way to the dining hall. However, um, we have had some issues with recovering food and having a place to store our food, so I have been um, taken apart in some communication between the dining hall staff and uh, public safety and our club. And I think those same uh, methods that were used can be implemented on a larger scale with the entire student body communicating with the administration and the dining hall. Um, I think a lot of the things that I hold are brand new. Um, there's been some growing pains and some settling pains. And I think there's also a few complaints that can be made. But for the most part, the food is good. The food, there's a variety of food. And even though we can complain that it gets boring because we do live here, it is still a lot better than some campuses. That being said, I think there are some structural problems, such as the um, meal swipes only going for a week that don't have anything to do with the food. It's not students complaining for no reason. They're actual problems that are bigger than, hey, could you um, get more of this food or something like that. And those things are more difficult than just writing a note. Um, though those are definitely effective things to do for some things, we need to have a stronger program of being able to talk to the administrators, whoever is the um, facilitator or whatever the problem is, and being able to state that this is a problem that is going to take some time to be solved. It's not just ordering more of this food or something like that. And um, ongoing communication and allowing the students to realize this is going to take some time, but if we all work together, it can happen. What I do think is important to recognize is that those associated with Bon Appetit and those in the administration who deal with the food um, really have our best interest at heart and are doing a lot to ensure that we have the food available that we'd like to have. And so it's really difficult for them to make quick changes in terms of dining. And so facilitating quick discussion through students that will then be transmitted to the committee that works so directly with Bon Appetit and the administration is really important because a lot of students will write on a card and they'll say, we want this food, and it'll come a few weeks later. And so they are often feeling as though their demands aren't being met, that their concerns aren't being met, but realistically, it's just difficult to streamline a process in this realm. And so developing a way to do that, similarly to what Tyler was saying earlier, maybe not solely relying on writing on cards and finding a quicker process to ensure the students are seeing the results that they want in a more timely fashion. Because those associated with the dining really are doing all that they can to ensure that we are enjoying the experience and are benefiting from the experience. Um, so upon talk, talking with a few students, particularly I remember this one Jewish girl I was talking to and she didn't want to eat anything. And I asked her, why are you eating it? And she told me that there weren't enough kosher options. And that really struck me because she's not eating any food and she wasted a meal swipe just to sit with us. And I think that that's really wrong, that someone isn't able to eat because there are religious restrictions. We need to find a better way to communicate the needs of those groups of people so that they can feel like they're being listened to. As Father Camps was saying earlier, just writing things on pieces of paper, when you want like thumbtack them to a wall, sure it gets your voice out, but it's really easy just to like go slip past it. And it's easy just to say, oh, okay, one to five. Like that's not a proper way to ad advocate how we feel internally. It's hard to say like our emotions are one to five on something. Maybe we want to minimize or maximize it to get an effect. I think what student government needs to do further is to try to get their opinions, try to make sure that all groups are represented, not just the ones who are the loudest, but everyone and voice them to Bon Appetit, and vice versa. However, I would like to keep in mind that I've gone to other schools to visit them, and I've noticed that the prices and the quality of food is much higher for a price and much lower for quality. So I need to keep in mind that yes, while Bon Appetit does have its faults, we do have reasonably good food. And I think that just like saying that it doesn't have anything is somewhat inaccurate. However, we do need to keep in mind that there are people who, like some people were saying, Food is our culture, or food is religious restriction, and we need to make sure that they are being listened to. Yeah. I think that there's two main problems right now with the uh, dining hall um, options. First, as a student athlete, uh, during the season we were running into a lot of difficulties making it to dining uh, times on time. And so uh, some days we would go with possibly one meal that we would have at 11 and wouldn't be able to eat again until 11 the next day because of practices conflicting with the dining hall times. Um, I think that uh, this just can be met with the simple solution of communication between the athletic uh, teams and uh, Bon Appetit. And that also actually also leads me into the second problem that I think we have is communication. As everybody else was saying here, 
um, we just feel like we need to have our voices advocated for more and a thumbtack on a wall with a piece of paper, very easy to slip by. Um, but with a survey online, that could be a lot easier to uh, read into and get data on. But then also, if we could get uh, feedback from Bon Appetit, if we could get like a weekly reminder update on our emails asking or telling us uh, what is going to be happening in the next week or if they've gotten what we want to do and like what our suggestions are. The first thing I see that's the most effective way of getting your voice heard is going directly to the source. And I know from my experience, well not from my experience, but knowing what people have heard, they kind of go to other people, but not to the source. And there's off, there's actually an office in Ray Fisher that Norman, I think that's his name, that he acts, that's actually his office. And I feel like a lot of people do not know that. And the second point I want to make is that it's not only problem with food, but actually how to treat the space you're eating at. A lot of people do not clean up after themselves or they either take stuff out to dining hall and that really frustrates the workers. And a lot of the students, I feel like they don't understand that because they put their plates up and just go. I've talked to a couple workers at Bon Up and I understand their complaints. They, some people say they have long hours, they barely get breaks. And I feel like just increasing the hour of Bon Up is not really gonna solve the problem because that's just gonna make their time there even more harsh because other people have outside lives. They don't just live on campus. They have other things to take care of. They have a family, they have to pay bills. So just increasing the time from where it is now to extend it is not really gonna solve the problem, but it's about really understanding where everyone's coming from and finding a middle point, a middle, a mid ground. Because you can't solve everyone's problems, you can't. But if you see patterns within everyone's problems, you can at least make a compromise. Yeah, I think it's very clear that, you know, with the construction of, you know, Mary Fisher Dining Hall and also, like, the takeover of Bon Appetit over, like, all the di all the different dining options here on campus, that, you know, it's certain that the dining situation is very much a work in progress, you know, and as Xavier and a couple others have said, you know, like before, that, you know, the main the main purpose, I, I think, that Gutcher Student Government needs to play is in through communication, you know, whether it's communicating, you know, athletics or whether it's communicating concerns of the students about, like, the workers and how, you know, perhaps there needs to be, a, you know, more hiring of staff or you know whether there needs to be more kosher options or m more options in general as far as diversity of food I mean, you know, and like, oh, we, I mean, it's clear that, you know, the Mary Fisher Dining Hall is, you know, among, one, you know, among the best among, in the, among schools, you know, as far as, you know, quality and also as cost. But, you know, it, you know there, there's always room for improvement, and it's very clear that there's room for improvement, you know, and the main purpose that got your student government is to communicate, you know, the needs of the students in a more efficient manner than it's currently being done, right, currently being done, so. Thank you, candidates. Polls are now open. You at home have received an email with instructions on how to vote online. Please use your right to vote to ensure your voice is represented within Goucher Student Government. Thank you for watching. This has been a collaboration between Goucher Eye Productions and Goucher Student Government.